Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Critters. Um, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Hope everybody's enjoying their time with their families. Um, so um, for those that might be joining that are new and not familiar with our services, um, my name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We are an international educational center where we teach people all over the world how to work with animals um, and empower animals and the people that care for them. And we do that through our live streaming services, teaching people about um, working with applied behavior analysis and positive reinforcement. We do that, um, we have clients all over the world and we do that with an array of different animals because as I was just talking to somebody last week, applied behavior analysis is not about um, a specific animal or um, specific species. It is about the laws of behavior and how it works across species. So welcome everybody, good morning. I see uh, Luann, Logan, Colleen, Judith, Heather, good morning everybody. Um, let's go ahead and get started and feel free to ask questions throughout this live streams as you wish. Um, it has been recommended to us and requested um, from several of our followers um, to talk about more about the work we do in the services we offer. This week was actually supposed to be about um, enrichment and I have all kinds of photos and videos ready for an enrichment uh, broadcast showing uh, how we're using enrichment with a array of different species, how we're incorporating that into our behavior modification plans. We've had people shipping us some of their products, wanting us to review them, which we have been in doing live streams. So I've rescheduled that enrichment episode for uh, December 22nd, I believe, because we already have the next two episodes books with interviews. And you're gonna wanna pay attention to um, our events section either on our website or here on the Animal Behavior Center's Facebook page um, for the upcoming topics we have for Coffee with Your Critters, which is every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern unless otherwise uh, due to my travel. You'll hear Quincy howling in the background. Um, and we have some really cool topics coming up and one I cannot wait. I believe she is scheduled for January. And this is with a species of animal I have yet to work with that I <laughs> have been wanting to work with for several different years. Good morning, Chris. I was just watching a, um, a video of you flying your birds last night. Good morning, Julie. Hello, everybody. Jennifer, Lori, Carol, Marie. Tim, Andrew. Okay, so let me go ahead and get started. So this live stream and feel free to ask questions, feel free to share. If there is something you see, a service that we offer that you want and want it on your holiday wish list, feel free to share this episode. This episode is also going to serve as a reference for the different services we offer. So one thing we don't do, um, I had our marketer reach out to us and say, is there anything you want to share for Black Friday? And I said, no, because um, we don't offer any specials. We don't offer discounts and we don't because we keep our services as low priced as possible because my goal is to help as many people as I possibly can, and I need to make that affordable. Um, so you'll see how we do it, and you're gonna see me present, show you probably a lot of services you weren't even aware that we had. Um, and we have services in all different types of price ranges, starting from, I believe it's $14.99. So with that being said, Happy Thanksgiving. And I see Therese Copawoda on here. She's our social media um, director. And she is the one that came up with this photo. So happy Thanksgiving. And that would be from Dill, who is skyrocketing in his training. Um, like I said, feel free to ask questions as we go along. 
Um, pay attention to our events page in our email newsletter list. I am trying to get another email newsletter sent out this week. Um, and our email newsletters cover all things uh, animal behavior training and enrichment related. Did you see our posts this past week? on the wolf training. Today is December 1st. So this past week, I tried to make a post every morning. Not everybody here trains wolves, but like I said, this is not about the species. The work that I do and help educate people is not necessarily about the species of animal. It's about the individual. It's about the individual situation. It's about um, how do we get there? And this series of posts on the wolves was, I started with, here's a problem that I am encountering. How do I deal with this? And this is not just one wolf. It's, I believe, six or seven wolves. Um, so take a look at that on our Facebook page. And Therese, those may be a great one to upload as a series of posts because they're videos to our Instagram page. Um, okay, so let's get started. If you have questions as we go along, um, please feel free to ask them. Hey, Jen. Jen is a professional dog trainer. Um, she says, I love the targeting and creating distance. Yes, thank you. And Jennifer, one thing that was really cool about that series is at the end of the series of videos, we showed how we deliver a food reinforcer and the size um, using the four main factors of reinforcer effectiveness. We delivered a food reinforcer as a reinforcer for how the animal accepts a different food. That was pretty cool. And that wolf training happened this past September in our first zoo workshop. So, okay. Thanks, Adrian. Um, Adrian says the wolf videos were really cool. So hopefully you guys see how that applies. It's not necessarily about working with a group of wolves. It's working about here's a behavior, concern, and situation. Where do I begin? We also talked about this yesterday in our level one monthly Q&A where we have a more complex behavior and we don't learn from easy. And when I find situations like this with the wolf training, I'm looking at it like, how do I dissect this and where do I begin? I am a single person trying to train six wolves at once. Um, yesterday, we talked about working in complex situations where an undesired behavior from a particular animal is being reinforced from another animal. I am not in this equation with the uh, behavior situation with animal number one. Um, it's this undesired behavior is being reinforced by animal number two. How do I use environmental events to get control and control the desired behavior? and change the undesired behavior. Um, so pretty cool. We don't learn from easy. So um, let's get started. And um, this is our website, the Animal Behavior Center. And you can find uh, at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. I'm going to run through the array of different services we have to offer per your request. So here it is. Um, when you go to our website, there's a services, workshops, memberships, all of this stuff. So we offer different things um, where you can either come here or I can come to you or I am in your home or I am in your home via your computer. This is how we make. My goal is to empower animals all over the world and the people that care for them. I will give my all to anyone that shows to me they are very dedicated and severe about working with um, the animals in their care, no matter what the species. So 
I don't know if anybody even knew we offered this. <laughs> Um, this a day with the trainer. This used to be something that I heavily promoted probably about 10 years ago. And people are starting to book these again. Um, this is where you come to me, work one on one with me for one day, two days, three days. But I do not go more than three days because it is a lot of information. You are side by side with me here at the center learning how we interact with all our animals, how we um, control an array of different situations. Um, hey, Terry, Parrot Project member. Um, and I also address and incorporate, you tell me what's happening in your home or organization, and I will pick different animals and different behaviors to work with you side by side. This is very popular. We just had somebody in here for this. Um, this is Ellie from Best Friends Parrot Garden, who was just in here um, for a couple of days at the beginning of this month. And we've got another one booked in, I believe it's next week. <laughs> um, so she, we just walked through a bunch of different situations and um, she actually helped me work on crate training and I fine tuned her training technique. Um, she got to be, she got to work with sunshine again. Sunshine is here from best friends, uh, parrot garden in Kanab, Utah. So we worked on syringe training, medication, delivery, timing, foot targeting, um, grooming behaviors. And we even worked on, this was cello's first time in a crate since his accident. Um, and the crate was not necessarily, I, I did crate train cello. Um, but one thing I did not do with cello was train him to accept medication. So I will take choice at, an, at, at it from an animal's environment when the alternative of not doing it is worse. Cello was very sick. He had an accident. I had to capture him. We had to crate him. Um, and force him to take medication for um, close to two weeks, okay? So this was his first time back in a crate since that accident. And the, the crating that we did with him during his accident, he did not find as positive. So this shows um, how we counter condition really fast. And he ended up going in and I tell people, when you're primarily using positive reinforcement, when those times come where you have to take the choice away from the animal for their well-being, um, if you're actually using positive reinforcement 95% of the time, that animal bounces back quickly. And Cello went right into the crate, not without hesitation. We had to do some reshaping. Um, Good morning, Laura. There's Laura Zitzelberger from Nature's Nursery. She's going to be on here in a couple of weeks. Um, professional dog trainer Jim Gillis from the UK is going to be on here next week, followed by Laura Zitzelberger the following week, followed by um, our enrichment review the following week. So good morning, Ray. Um, okay, something else we do. Custom workshops where... Um, a couple of people either at the same education level or from the same organization or even friends will come here to take a one, two or three day workshop um, with me Will where I will custom organize it around whatever you want um, and working with whatever animals you want. Good morning, everybody and happy Thanksgiving. Um, we've had several of these here. Um, people will tell me what, you know, this is the behaviors I want to work on in my home or in my organization. And boom, I just start picking the animals that are going to best help you. If I see you struggling with application, I may put you on a more forgiving animal. Or I will actually break it down to all the steps you need to fine tune and perfect your approach before working with more complex animals here. Um, so these custom workshops, I will go over 
four people, I usually like to keep it no more than six because I am addressing situations in your particular organization or your um, or your household. So usually what people do and what I, what is a requirement for this is I can't have a mixed group of education levels. I can't have somebody in here that is just getting introduced to positive reinforcement with somebody else that is an advanced trainer. Um, so what I'll do is um, like individuals that are friends come here for these. Um, different organizations come here for these. Um, and we'll work with an array of different animals or whatever animals you want to work with. Um, we have an organization. It's an actual, a, another Metro Park. We have a couple of different Metro Parks that are in our level two, but um, we have a the staff of a Metro Park um, coming here next week for this. So, and there's the awesome Jeannie and John Gilligan. Um, in one of these workshops, something else, we have an array of different workshops. So, um, and I'd like to figure out how to do these workshops online for organizations as well. I have wanted to create these online, but people who have been here said, no, you need to keep them in person. So, um, this was a two-day workshop we did uh, last year. We didn't do it this year. We're going to do it again next year. So this was $300 for the weekend for two days. Um, and it focused on animal enrichment, not a specific species. Uh, but we are considering having certain animal enrichment workshops here, which are for specific species. I'm also going to approach, there's a zoo I work with here locally very regularly that hires me to come in if anybody's interested in a zoo workshop where we, zoo enrichment workshop, where we put together enrichment to help modify behavior and then take that enrichment and you incorporate it into that animal's enclosure. Um, so here's, uh, this particular workshop we worked on. I like to empower animals. That is why I love making enrichment, um, to help modify behaviors. Foraging is a part of every single one of our behavior modification plans. Foraging is the act of searching for food. And this is behavior that, um, we teach. Sometimes the animal doesn't need to learn how to forage. It's already foraging. But what I will do is increase complexity, shape increasing complexities, because foraging is a great replacement behavior. You hear me say all the time, if you have an undesired behavior, one that you want to change with an animal, um, in order to change that behavior, you need to replace it with another one. And we replace those behaviors through training and we training alternate behaviors or counter conditioning, delivering reinforcement for an alternate behavior, an incompatible behavior, another behavior. Um, and we also do this through foraging. If the animal is foraging for its food, it is not practicing the undesired behavior. Those undesired behaviors could be excessive barking, lunging, chasing, uh, self-destructive behaviors such as self-injurious behaviors. I need to redirect those behaviors. All behavior happens for a reason. Um, or it would not exist. It serves a purpose for the animal. And sometimes these unbehaviors um, are being exhib exhibited because they're helping the animal deal with some form of stress. And my ultimate goal is to take as much stress out of that animal's life as possible. And studies show that if you're actually using positive reinforcement training, it's the animal's preferred form of enrichment. Depending on the behavior you're trying to work with, um, pretty soon, a lot of times, if I'm lucky, um, I don't believe in luck. I believe in hard work. Um, I believe in science. And 
the st statistics behind it. But a lot of times where I begin working with uh, <laughs> Jen, you're my reinforcement. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a lot of times where I have to begin working with an animal with it is with food. Um, not all the time. I've worked with animals that are so stressed, they will not even take food from me. But what I do in the beginning is consistently pair myself with the favored food reinforcers or the favored preferred reinforcers, which are not always food. What I find, what I'm doing is uh, I'm turning myself in, I'm pairing myself as a conditioned reinforcer. Every single time I interact with that animal, I am pairing myself with that animal's preferred reinforcer in the delivery of that reinforcer. So now I start becoming of value to that animal. And once I do, it usually doesn't take long, however that is, one day, one hour, one week, before the animal starts wanting to be with me because I have paired myself with its preferred reinforcers. And pretty soon the opportunity to engage with me becomes the animal's preferred reinforcer. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so I see, there's a talk I give called the three C's choice, control, and complexity. These are three things I am always trying to incorporate into an animal's environment. I do that because it, it empowers the animal. Um, it helps the animal live a more healthy life to the best of its ability, to the best of the ability that I can give it. Um, so most people struggle with these three C's. Um, how do we in incorporate more choice into the animal's environment? How do we incorporate more sense of control? Um, I like to work with exotics and undomesticated, but definitely not limited to. Um, I do because I find that level of complexity increases and my level of learning increases. Um, so with a lot of these animals that I work with, um, choices are limited because these animals are living in enclosures. If there are four walls and a roof that that animal is living in an enclosure. So it's not necessarily the size of the enclosure that can be enrichment, enrichment, enriching because the size of the enclosure can also be an aversive. A lot of times so many people think, I'm giving you this big place to live. Why are these stress behaviors still happening? Um, it's not necessarily about the size. A large enclosure can be very stressful to an animal that isn't used to that. When, and a lot of times what we will do when working with a stressed or fearful animal is give it a place to hide, give it a place to move away from us. And if I, I'm not understanding the behavior I'm looking at with that animal, which I need to as soon as possible, which is why I train. If I am not understanding this particular individual behavior, I will provide the animal a place to escape and the animal to physically and visually retreat from me. And if I see that behavior of that animal retreating, maintaining or increasing guess what? It's being reinforced. Um, so that is a cue to me that if I don't understand this animal's behavior yet, because I will, and I do that through training, if I don't understand it yet, the cue to me that I may be pushing this animal past its comfort level is by watching the rate at which it chooses to retreat to that area that I've created for it to retreat to. That is communication. Okay, off my soapbox. <laughs> so the numerous different workshops we offer, um, we've been known for offering our October workshop. We do this, the all um, species animal training and behavior workshop every October. It's always the second weekend in October. And I've done this for years, I think since the first year we opened. 
where we focus on not a particular species. We talk, we focus on the laws of behavior, rates of reinforcement, how to use target training to get to understand an animal. And um, over the past couple of years, we've had professional animal trainers attend this, um, board certified behavior analysts that want to know more how to get into the field of applied animal behavior. And I keep it small based on the the needs of that workshop and if i see a professional in the group i'm going to go stick you on an animal that you've never worked with or i'm going to stick you on an animal where here's your problem behavior how do we approach this and a lot of times um people it is not unlikely for me to see people break down and cry in my workshops. <laughs> now, <laughs> the reason behind that is because they begin understanding their own behavior in situations in their daily lives um, that they are learning through using applied behavior analysis with animals. Our animals can be fabulous teachers. Thanks, Laura. Um, she says those workshops are amazing. So much to learn. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you, Laura. You have been to several of our workshops. Um, hey, Colette, good to see you on here. Look, I'm surprised there's so many people on here that want to learn more about the services. Um, okay. Other workshops we have that people come in here for. Um, I'm currently just talking about things that are here at our center. And then I will move on to things that we do all over the world and how we can help you through your computer or your live streaming devices. Our zoo workshops, we have two more scheduled. They will book quick. I haven't even put a link to register yet because that's how quick they're going to book. Um, and we first offer these to our members, level one and level two. If seats are still available, we offer them to the public. Um, so pay attention to those. Um, our online behavior and training consultations. Um, I do consultations with people all over the world. And we do this through, because here's the thing. This is why I'm a big believer in online consultations. And I believe Jim Gillis will agree with me next weekend when he's on because he's in the UK. Because here's what I was finding. When I go into a person's home, based on that individual animal's behavior, that behavior is going to change because a new environmental event has happened. What is that new environmental event? Me. I have walked into the room. Um, and I will see animals not giving me behavior because I have walked into the room. Um, I need to see behavior in its raw form. Um, I need to see baseline behavior. Where is this? What does this behavior look like before a behavior modification plan has come into place? And we do this with people from all over the world through our online consultations. And a lot of times people will take video and show me, and this is what we do in our membership, online membership program, show me the behavior. And this person is standing right in front of the animal. So then I'm sitting here watching it on my computer and I'm like, bingo. And usually I'm like, I start picking out potential reinforcers behind the undesired behavior. Um, People like to bring their animals to me. This isn't necessary. If you're working with a fearful animal, <laughs> having it here in this center with barking and running dogs, a flying turkey vulture, screaming parrots, bouncing lemurs, your animal is going to be very over threshold. All right. So I really love doing consultations online. Um, and we do these individually. Um, hey, Samantha. Great explanation, Laura. I imagine retreating is often a replacement behavior for aggression. Yeah. Yes. And or potential aggression, getting ready to train behaviors labeled as aggressive. We were talking yesterday 
in our live stream Q and A, I never approach an animal in a crate. Um, if a dog is in its crate, I do not approach it because that dog is restricted of choice. Um, and if somebody approaches that dog and that dog gives a growl, I will not punish. I don't try to use an aversive to change that growl because if I don't pay attention to that growl, the animal is going to learn the growl does not work. So one of the four main side effects of using aversives to control behavior is increased force, increased aggression. Okay. The dog learns that the growl does not work. So now what do I need to do? Lunge. And then once I have learned two plus two equals four and it works, I don't forget it because even if I don't use it all the time, I know it's, it's back here in the back of my mind. And if A and B don't work, boom, I'm going to pull out C and see if that works. And if it does once in a while, now it's on an intermittent schedule of reinforcement, which can keep desired behavior, behavior very strong. Um, so Laura, director, uh, operations director at Nature's Nursery, says that's true of our situation. Working with wild animals, it will change dramatically when a new person is introduced. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Thanks for your input. Thanks for everybody's input. Um, because this, when we know better, we do better. Our animals need us to do better. Okay. Our animals are fabulous teachers. And you hear me say, we don't learn from easy. I don't learn from easy. I'm continually looking for more complex situations. So, um, our online consultations can be, um, these can make great gifts for, for people all over the world for somebody that know you that you know that needs help could be a great gift for the animal lover on your list could be a great gift for you because one thing I see a lot of animal lovers and caretakers doing is taking care of everybody else and not taking care of yourself. Um, is that not true? Um, so treat yourself buy something for yourself um, if you see something you need and want get it okay because if you're caring for animals in your house or in your organization i guarantee you are probably withholding things from yourself to give it to your animals um, this is why i started taking trying taking regular vacations because i spent the first seven years of my life dedicating 100 percent I will say 24 seven because I, I dream about my animals all the time. Um, and my stress comes through my dreams and I can tell, um, because in one of my dreams the other night, um, the roof ripped off of my center and Willoughby was out there and I was constantly stressing, trying to get her back to the glove and get her in an enclosure. And people kept walking in the front door, leaving the doors open. And all of a sudden the roof was back on the green, on my center, but the doors were all open and it was 30 below zero. And I kept screaming and crying to people, will you please shut the door? This animal is in here. So yes, our stress comes through our dreams. <laughs> um, so online consultations can be booked one series of sessions. Um, I never suggest just one. Very rarely. And let me tell you why. Because I am not there for you to answer your questions, to keep you going and making progress after. This is why we designed our online level one and level two memberships, because it's an annual subscription where I'm there every, almost every single time you post. I am there every month for a q and I am there every day analyzing video, keeping people moving in the right direction. And we have our online consultations are at a reduced price for people who are in our level one membership. Um, because then I have you for the rest, rest of the year. That's why I came up with the annual subscription. So I can keep you moving all year long. And if you stop responding, 
I'm going to tag you and find you <laughs> because the health of your animal is top priority to me and the health of you taking care of that animal. Um, <laughs> um, thanks, Laura. Um, and so in our level two membership, your online consultations are at no charge. Um, something else I do is I travel and speak internationally where people will have me come in, do a presentation or give a workshop to their organization. Something else I do, which I will really be focusing on this year, is teleconferencing where I can, you don't have to fly me out and have me give a workshop or a uh, presentation. I can now do it for you and I wouldn't suggest doing it for an individual. I can now do it for your organization. I can now do it for your group. If you have a group and we can live stream, I can give presentations, give demonstrations, address questions um, without having me um, fly to your area of the world. Here is something that is not taken advantage of, and these are fabulous. I Okay, what does fabulous look like? Fabulous looks like to me, I collect data through <laughs> responses, um, testimonials. So our uh, record, we have recorded webinars and live streamed webinars, which now that our website is almost finished. This is our brand new website that you're looking at. We're still working behind the scenes. I'm going to start offering live webinars again, which we're trying to do this month before the second week of December on an array of topics. So if you go to the animal behavior um, that Therese just posted a link. If you go to the animal behavior center.com, you see all of this stuff at the top and you can see um, our services, our memberships, and our webinars, um, our webinars are $34.99 each and they can last anywhere. They're supposed to be an hour, but I keep giving. So they're more like an hour and a half to two hours. Um, and they're on an array of different topics, all right? If you know of somebody that needs help in one of these topics, these make great gifts. And we do have gift vouchers, certificates for individual um, services we have for sale, or we can do them in custom amounts. Um, so our webinars are an array of different topics, and you can find all species webinars. So we do webinars on the laws of behavior, um, different topics, the importance and effective use of bridging. Why did I do a webinar on that? Because I see that very misused, underestimated, um, in the world of living with animals. A bridge, a bridge is a sign or signal that tells the animal, boom, that's the particular behavior that's earning you this reinforcer that I'm giving ready to deliver. It's called a bridge because it bridges the period of time between when the actual behavior was delivered and the time it takes you to deliver the reinforcer. Um, a bridge is a conditioned reinforcer. That is the I. One of the four main factors in reinforcer effectiveness is immediacy. If you are misusing and mismarking, and so many people do, and I am a stickler for the bridge. You know why? Because I work with a lot of animals in enclosures that um, behaviors labeled as aggressive are reinforced. There's a long history of reinforcement of behaviors labeled as aggressive. And if your bridge is off, boom, you could be miscommunicating to your animal. And when you are miscommunicating, several things happen. Frustration can happen on the animal side. Frustration can happen on your side. Um, you can actually reinforce the very undesired behavior you're trying to change. OK, because the animal is thinking due to your timing being off, I thought it was this that's earning me the reinforcer. And now I'm giving this behavior and you're not delivering the reinforcer. That's where the community, uh, the frustration through communication comes in. 
anyways, we're not talking about, <laughs> I could just start talking about um, bridging um, and uh, reinforcing undesired behaviors. Reinforcers, reinforcement, and identification. There's several different um, webinars we have here. I have heard this from our own volunteers here at the Animal Behavior Center, that identifying reinforcers is not as easy as you make it look. You guys, I live, breathe, and bleed ABA, Applied Behavior Analysis, working with animals and people because I use it with my volunteers. My volunteers use it with me. Um, it may look easy when I do it because I do this all the time. Um, but my goal is to help make you very successful. <clears throat> um, so we always tell people, you can be as book smart as you want, but if you are not applying this information, you are missing well over 50% of the education. Um, so, okay, Jen says she wants to bring me to Iowa. I would love to. I would love that, Jen. I would love the opportunity to work with you. Um, we have species-specific webinars for um, parrots, preparing your bird for flight and beginning recall. Your animal doesn't know, have to, doesn't know, doesn't have to be able to fly to be able to um, train recall. Recall is getting an animal to come to you when you cue it to, okay? The cool thing about working with lemurs and parrots is when you've moved past that animal's comfort point, it's gone. You can't even reach it. <laughs> so that fine tunes um, our training to help to prevent that from even happening. If you've watched my live streams on Coffee with the Critters, you see that one minute I'll have a lemur right in front of you right in front of me and next thing I know, pew, it's 12 feet behind me. Um, we offer a lot of webinars for pigs. Pig community needs help. The pig community needs a lot of help because the main form, the pig community and the horse community are two communities out there that are still heavily relying in on negative reinforcement and positive punishment. If I need to find a, pu a public video showing the use of a positive punisher, positive punishers are always aversives, aversives of things the animal doesn't like. If I need to find examples, because I have a hard time finding examples in my, and I will go through all my own work looking for a positive punisher, negative reinforcer, which are often misunderstood. Um, it is very hard for me to find one because I am trying to make that encounter as positive as possible for not only the animal, but for me. Because if it is not a positive situation for me, it is going to positively punish the future behavior of me working with that animal. And I can't have that because if that animal is here for training or behavior modification, it needs it. All right. Um, I need to have fun while I am training an animal. And fun for me is education, learning something new. And I take the laws of behavior in my history of education and applied behavior analysis and apply it to all kinds of new situations. That is a reinforcer for me. Education is brain candy for me. I am addicted to education in applied behavior analysis. Um, so what I was saying was if I need to look for the use of negative reinforcement, which is escape avoidance behavior, the animal gives you the behavior to escape avoid a consequence. I don't want to be associated with that. Um, it's using force and coercion. If I am using a positive punisher, which is positive because it's added, it's when you're adding an aversive to the environment. Um, if I am using if I need to find examples of either one of those, I can easily find it, find it within a two minute search. This is the sad part. I can easily find it being used in the pig community 
in the horse community. Those are two areas of animal behavior and training that we need to know better. Um, I got in an argument. I get in a lot of arguments. <laughs> I am very confident in my work. What makes me confident is experience. I keep my mind open to whatever. If you are debating with me, I am learning from you. And I appreciate that. And if you are debating with me, it's because you think I'm right. If I am debating with you, it's because I think I may have something that I could bring to the table that could maybe we could approach the situation differently. And um, if we are in a debate, it's because we both think we have something to bring to the table. I am okay with that. You don't have to agree with me. Um, make sense? Um, Jen says horses, dogs, <clears throat> and pigs, the animals that will allow humans to hurt them in the name of training. So very sad. Training should be fun and engaging for the animal. It should be fun and engaging for the animal. I agree, Jen. And it should be fun and engaging for us. Um, Shelly says the horse community has some wonderful upcoming trainers that are trying to change that. Yes. I know we have some in level one and level two, and we can always continue to do better. Um, and Julie, who is in our level one and the parrot project, says she works with horses too. Those of you that know me know horses are one of the animals I am afraid of <laughs> for several different reasons. And I want, to, if I'm afraid, I want to work with a horse really bad. Um, and we do have the healing barn here outside of town, which I need to get in touch with to see if I can go and volunteer. Because, and we just had this last week in a live stream. If I am afraid of an animal, do you know why? It's because, I see that Eva. If I am afraid of an animal, it's because I do not understand that animal. And I am live training a baboon in our level two membership. Why? Not everybody trains baboons. It's because I don't know where to begin. Where do I begin? So where I begin is through observing. And with, I think, within, let's say, 10 training sessions. And some of you in here, maybe on our level two, feel free to speak up because I live streamed all this. Within 10 training sessions, I am beginning to know this baboon. What does no mean? I'm beginning to understand. I'm beginning to understand what certain facial um, gestures mean. And just because somebody tells me, we just talked about this yesterday, right? Just because somebody tells me this means something, I will keep it in the back of my head. But what I am finding out is this meant something completely different than what this person told me. And I learned that through working with that one baboon and now i'm seeing this baboon in very engaging with me and calling me over and eagerly coming up and sitting in front of me during a training session waiting for the next session to start how the hell did i get on that when we were talking about pigs okay so <laughs> this is where my live streaming comes into play if we're not working one-on-one, one-to-one -on -one, one -one, here in front of me or me out there anywhere in the world in front of you, this is how I can get to you within your home, within your organization. Those of you that know me know I am extremely passionate about my work. Um, <clears throat> so our online memberships. Level one, level two. You can find out if you go to our website, which is the animalbehaviorcenter.com, and click on memberships right up there at the top. Um, you will see it. A, it'll take you to our level one and level two. Level one is designed for the companion animal. This is a gift of $149 that lasts you all year long. It is a very engaging community. We have any level one members on here? Um, speak up what you like. And I can't read because the print is so small. We do have monthly live stream Q&As. Very engaging. I got 
fabulous reviews off of our Q&A yesterday. This is for companion animals, but definitely not limited to. We have some zoo keepers and trainers in level one. Uh, what else we have? Ooh, we have wildlife rehab. We have wildlife rehabbers in level two. We have somebody else. Um, we have somebody working with their horse in level one. Somebody working with their dog in level one. Somebody live streaming with their pig in level one, because it's all about the laws of behavior. So um, it level one involves so many things, including our uh, podcasts, which are extremely popular. These are also in level two. Our podcast called the Animal Behavior Hour. I give a one-hour podcast every month. And I've been doing that for four years. So there's a big library there. And when people join level one or level two, one of the first things I hear is their your podcasts are addicting and people binge watch binge watch. So Lori's in here. Um Thank you, Lori. Um, I believe, Lori, are you in level one and the Parrot Project? Um, Susie Chin is in level one. Um, okay, so those are our podcasts. Level one involves so much. You can go to the website and find out. Level two is more for people that are want more information in how applied behavior analysis works with an array of species. We also have we have um, live stream group discussions. We have live stream group Q and A's because you are not only in there with me, you are in there with other professional trainers, other people wanting to get into the field of applied behavior analysis, and you need to hear from them as well. This is a network working community where level two, we also have the podcast, your free consultations. We have organizations, uh, wildlife rehab centers, professional trainers, board certified behavior analysts. Did I say wildlife rehab? Yes. Metro parks are in there. Um, shelters are in there. Okay. Then we have something, um, our live streaming services all over the world that are species specific. Now our memberships are designed to be combined with our projects. Projects are species specific. Not everybody has a parrot, so why would they join the parrot project? Um, but if they have companion animals, they'll join level one. If they have a parrot, they can combine level two and level one together at a reduced price. The same thing for level two. Um, so the parrot project, do we have anybody in here? <laughs> Shelly says, I'm in all of it. And she is. There are several people that are in all projects and all memberships. Um, um, Heather says, I want to renew my parrot project when my membership is up and I want to add level two. How do I do that? Um, feel free to either contact me or Karen afterwards, Heather, or you can go right into level one hit subscribe and you'll see a screen pop up that asks you if you want to add a project to it at a reduced price. Then you select yes, click your project, boom. All comes in through one payment, one subscription. And there's only a $50 difference of having both of them. Um, Colleen is in level one and the parrot project gives me maximum communication tools with my animals to interact with each one successfully. And Colleen applies them to more than just her parrots. Patricia is in level two. Um, Ray is in parrot project level one. Lori's in level one. Leanne just joined. Tracy's <laughs> in the parrot project. Um, okay, so Parrot Project, extremely engaging. And I guarantee you, it's probably one of the most popular. Um, and what I describe popular as is testimonials given from those that are in it. We've had people in level one, level two, um, different projects, Parrot Project, that very rarely do they drop out. But when they do, the rate of rejoining is very high. So observable, measurable behavior that I am paying attention to. Um, <clears throat> so thanks, Melinda. 
So parrot projects are species specific. We have so much <clears throat> going on in the parrot project. We just did a live stream interview with Dr. Amy Hopkins from Yale um, on zoonoses. Um, we have live streamed interviews, oops, with pigs, I'm kidding, with different professionals. We do this in each of our projects. Um, pig project, if there's anybody interested, private message me. I have something happening that you may be very interested in that is a very limited time. We also, okay, so this is all that the pig project entails, annual, all year long, Q and A's. We have pig project members coming into level one um, because like I said, level one and level two is not about the individual animal. It's about the laws of behavior and how it applies to all species. And if I see somebody struggling, I will go live and do a live streams, particularly for them with that particular species of animal, if they want and show how I approach it. We also have the deaf dog project um, where it's the same as the parrot project and the pig project, except we focus on nothing but deaf dog project. Ouch, deaf dogs. And I highly suggest if you're going to join the parrot project or the pig project or deaf dog project to also join level one. Okay, so that's all the deaf dog project. I think we're coming up on the end. This was just suggested to me the other day. And this was from somebody in Instagram. <clears throat> so somebody tomorrow, somebody saw that tomorrow night. No, not tomorrow. Today's Sunday, Tuesday night. December 3rd, we have a live stream group discussion on training for voluntary nail trims. It is specifically happening within the Parrot Project, and we're doing it group. So it opens up where everybody that joins is on my screen. And we are talking about the progress of how everybody is doing, problems, because there are a lot of problems that can happen teaching a parrot a, nail, a voluntary nail trim. And one is getting bit. Um, so we're going to entertain this idea for all species. Somebody, so tomorrow night is, or Tuesday night is a group live stream in the Parrot Project on teaching a voluntary nail trim, which we are training right now and many people making progress in the Parrot Project. Somebody says, or do you have these for all animals and can the end of, can somebody not be in a particular membership or project? and join this live stream. So I immediately started texting Therese Copawoda, um, who is on here, and um, <clears throat> our social media director. Um, <clears throat> I started texting with her and I was like, hey, got an idea. How about individual group live streams for the public? At a, at a rate, we have it in our mind, very affordable. Um, so we can help a lot more people. And she was like, absolutely, we need to do this. Let me help you do this. So we are going to start having these on. But if you're in that species specific project or membership, you are going to get these at no charge. Um, in addition to live streamed webinars on that particular topic um, are of no charge. If you are a member of the project or the memberships, depending on what it is, live streamed behavior related webinars are free to level one and level two. Level two gets everything almost for free. <laughs> um, <clears throat> parrot project subscribers get live stream parrot related webinars at no charge. Um, so we're talking about group live streams discussions just on certain topics. The last one is called working with behavior behaviors labeled as aggressive. Okay, then we also have the referral program. So some organizations are too busy and understandably so, such as shelters. Um, to be in the parrot project, level one, the pig project, level two, um, the deaf dog project. So what we do for them, what we do for everybody, for every five people that sign up for one of our memberships or projects referred to us by you gets a free hour, one hour, 
consultation, online consultation with me. So we also have, we sell products that we use, treat pouches, stations, target sticks. Um, we have our mugs that make great uh, Christmas gifts, um, our products, okay? We also have gift vouchers. Um, thank you, Shelly. She says she uses her knowledge every minute of every day. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. We have gift vouchers. Sorry, I tried to hit next, but I accidentally hit in broadcast and I can't. Oh, there we go. We have gift vouchers. Um, so if you want to give these, we had this done last year where people purchased a level one or level. No, that nobody purchased a level two membership <laughs> for a gift, a level one membership for the animal lover in their life. Put it in a card or the pig project or the parrot project or the deaf dog project, put it in a card and hung it on the Christmas tree. So, and we have gift vouchers in all different amounts and we give those to you. So if it has been of relevance to you or for somebody on your list, please feel free to share this with them. You can also contact me individually at Laura at the Animal Behavior Center dot com and I can help guide you to any of your questions or something you may be interested in. So with that being said, happy holidays, everybody. Um, thanks for attending this broadcast. And when we know better, we do better, right? All right. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next week, Sunday morning, live with Jim Gillis, professional dog trainer from the UK. Take care.